The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Hattenberg with AMBA and BGA, and welcome to our webinar on how business schools can make an impact through sustainability. Uh, with us today, we have uh, Rafaela uh, Cagliano, who is a full professor of people management and organization at the School of Management of Politecnico di Milano. She uh, is a renowned researcher in the field of manufacturing and supply chain strategies, with particular emphasis on organizational models and sustainable innovation. She is associate editor of the International Journal of Co Operations and Production Management and of Operations Management Research. So without much further ado, uh, please, uh, Raffaello, uh, take, take over. Uh, and um, we are quite excited to hear uh, what you can teach us a little bit about sustainability in business schools. Uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, good afternoon everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here and try to share some ideas about how business school can make an impact through sustainability and I will uh, try to um, present a, a little bit a general model uh, of uh, how we can do this and of course I will refer as much as I can uh, to the experience that we developed here at the School of Management of Politecnico di Milano. Uh, first of all, let me say just a few words uh, about uh, who we are, uh, for the one that uh, don't know us uh, uh, that well. Um, and uh, of course, uh, uh, as the School of Management of Politecnico di Milano, we are full part of our university, and Politecnico di Milano is uh, well, the oldest and largest uh, uh, technical school in Italy. Uh, we date back in 1863, and um, we are uh, um, considered uh, uh, by many of the rankings that are around one of the best technical universities uh, uh, also in Europe and around the world, uh, uh, considered six in Europe and 16 around the world, according to the uh, recent QS uh, World University ranking by subject. Uh, being a technical university, we cover basically three main domains. There are architecture, design and engineering, uh, while we don't cover other uh, traditional uh, disciplines. Uh, considered uh, the uh, average size of also other Italian or European universities who are pretty broad, uh, we have uh, more than 43,000 students uh, uh, around uh, 1,400 uh, professors, and we are organized in 12 uh, different departments that cover the different disciplines in the three main areas I was mentioning before. And uh, uh, within Politecnico di Milano, the School of Management uh, is uh, where all the research and uh, teaching around the subjects of uh, economics, applied economics, uh, uh, management and industrial engineering is performed and in particular uh, within uh, this uh, scope uh, we have a, a broad end-to-end -end portfolio of, uh, of uh, programs and activities that, that range from uh, the bachelor and master of science and phd in management engineering to uh, the more traditional programs at uh, business schools such as mba executive mba uh, corporate education and uh, uh, executive education uh, also, the school is pretty broad. Uh, we have uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, 5,000 uh, students on degree programs, 23% uh, uh, of uh, which are international. Well, this uh, percentage range uh, uh, quite a lot depending on the program. We, are pro we have program where this percentage is very close to 95 or even more uh, percent. And uh, this is done through a faculty that is uh, uh, more or less around 112 uh, full-time professors. Um, and uh, what uh, um, I would like to tell you today is something that uh, uh, refers to uh, the School of Management uh, that uh, is made by both uh, the university part with the Bachelor and Master of Science uh, and uh, uh, the PhD and uh, the Graduate School of uh, Business, that is MIP, where we teach postgraduate and post-experience education. 
Okay, so given this background, let's move uh, uh, to our main subject today, uh, that is uh, uh, how business schools can impact through sustainability. And the starting point I would like to take uh, is uh, the fact that we see an increasing uh, importance of uh, responsibility and impact uh, uh, in uh, the focus of uh, business schools. And uh, in, uh, in this line, I just gather some of the uh, things uh, that uh, have been around in, uh, very recently, uh, just to mention a few. Uh, for the first time, the Financial Times uh, decided to include uh, in their rankings uh, of business schools uh, uh, a specific uh, indicator related to the percentage of hours that are taught on the subject related to uh, CSR or sustainability. And beside this, uh, uh, and this was uh, last year, the first ranking coming out, including this parameter. And beside that, um, they launched a survey uh, to try to uh, um, find out the best practices that business school were putting together uh, in terms of how to uh, uh, include responsibility in their uh, activities, in their program, in their research, and so on and so forth. And very recently, uh, they um, published the report that came out from, uh, from this article. At the same time, uh, the Times Higher Education uh, published the first university impact ranking, so a new ranking that uh, is classifying universities based on the uh, level of impact that they were making in the society. Uh, and of course, the discussion has been around also many other uh, institutions uh, and organizations. Uh, uh, on the uh, right hand side of my slide, I have a, a paper that has been published that referred to the idea of the business school that can become benefit corporations uh, in a similar way uh, as uh, many uh, companies are doing, uh, where uh, basically uh, the uh, responsibility and uh, um, impact uh, that the school is willing to have uh, is uh, uh, not just uh, uh, mentioned in a mission or vision, but it's really a commitment uh, within the legal status of uh, the school itself. And of course, also the major um, uh, management journals are talking about this uh, shift that is envisioned in, in the business school. So this is just the background and the starting point. Uh, and of course, uh, 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 this is within a broader discussion that uh, is around uh, uh, about the role of uh, education, uh, more in general, so not just business education, to contribute to the sustainable development of uh, our society. Just again, to mention a few of the most important uh, initiatives in this direction, we have uh, the UNESCO uh, Education for Sustainable uh, Development uh, uh, Program and uh, action, uh, Global Action Program that uh, is uh, looking for um, de de fostering uh, the uh, uh, key role of uh, any uh, educational institution in uh, contributing to the sustainable development and the achievement of this, this sustainable development goals that have been defined uh, by uh, the UN. Uh, at the same time, uh, in a more specific way, uh, the principles for responsible management education uh, have been uh, developed uh, uh, exactly with uh, the aim of defining some key principles that uh, educational uh, um, institution can uh, implement in, in order to uh, achieve this goal of contributing to sustainable development. And finally, the Higher Education Sustainability Initiative uh, that is uh, basically trying to put together all those uh, institutions that are uh, highly committed towards uh, contributing to sustainability. And of course, this is a consequence of, on, uh, of uh, how our world is, uh, is changing. I will not spend uh, uh, much time on that because I think all of us are, are aware about the key uh, sustainability and societal challenges uh, that we are facing that are well summarized by the sustainable development goals uh, uh, provided by the UN. Uh, that suggests uh, specifically the direction to which uh, we should move uh, and the specific target that uh, we uh, aim to achieve by 2030. Uh, 
uh, and together with this, uh, so an increasing awareness of uh, the society of uh, uh, what we need to do uh, to contribute to a more sustainable development. Uh, also, the business world is changing. We all are, uh, know uh, the very um, impactful uh, initiative uh, uh, that the Business Roundtable uh, did uh, um, sometime uh, last year, uh, which is a, a new statement on, on the purpose of the corporation, and uh, there, uh, where there is a clear shift uh, between a vision where uh, the purpose of the corporation is uh, to satisfy the shareholders and to, do it, and to uh, give a, a, a value to the shareholders to a vision where uh, companies uh, have to serve all the stakeholders besides the, uh, only the shareholders. And this was uh, a quite a strong statement that was subscribed by around 200 uh, CEO of the major uh, America's corporation. And on this, uh, on the, uh, on this uh, same direction, also uh, other uh, areas <laughs> of the uh, world moved. Uh, and for example, in, in Europe, where we have the call for action that uh, was again launched to all the CEO, major, uh, the CEO of the major corporation in Europe uh, to again uh, commit uh, to uh, contribute to sustainable development. Uh, Okay, so within uh, this scenario, what can we do? What is our role and uh, what business schools are, are doing? Uh, of course, we have an important role uh, because uh, we are, are a key players in the society. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, we have a clear uh, direct and indirect role uh, in uh, shaping the future economic society, a direct, direct role uh, since uh, uh, we, uh, aim at influencing the way uh, our businesses, our companies are, are run, are managed, uh, and an indirect role uh, through the fact that we, uh, our uh, aim is uh, to educate current and future leaders that uh, in turn will uh, contribute to shape the future economic society by the way they will manage the companies they, were, they will uh, be working for. Uh, so, it's clear enough that uh, our role is key in the way we determine uh, the economic paradigm that we want to transfer. Uh, and beside that, uh, there is a specific call, uh, again referring to the Sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, uh, that is the SDG number four, that uh, refer to uh, have an, uh, an inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Uh, of course, as all the other SDGs, uh, there are different uh, targets. And I would say that uh, there is a, a specific target that call uh, for our action, that is target number 4.7, uh, where uh, the aim is uh, to ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed uh, to promote sustainable development uh, with all the different faces that this uh, uh, would, uh, would uh, mean. So here there is a clear uh, call for action also on our side. And another thing that I want to, to recall is that of course all of uh, our uh, schools have a clear uh, idea that we are evaluated and measured on the type of impact uh, that we are able to uh, provide. And uh, I, I was just recalling in this slide uh, the three key <laughs> dimension that AACSB is uh, um, asking us uh, to take care of, that is engagement, innovation and impact. So impact is really one of the key aspects. And of course, impact uh, uh, doesn't say what type of impact, so uh, what we want to discuss today is how to link impact to this uh, specific role in uh, the sustainable development. Uh, what we can see is that in fact, uh, 
there is uh, a quite important movement by business schools in, uh, in this direction. And a first snapshot that I would like to take is about uh, how business groups see themselves and present themselves to the world through typically the mission and vision. That is, uh, you know, the first way uh, you try to summarize uh, what you uh, aim to do. And here I, I picked up just uh, four possible examples. I'm sure there are many, many others uh, that. Uh, show uh, something that I picked up from someone else, it's not my own uh, sentence, the fact that business school missions are moving from self-realization to impact realization and inspiration. So if in the past we saw a lot of missions and visions where the key uh, role of the business school was uh, to uh, 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 support leaders in their self-realization, their success in the business world. Now, business schools are declaring more and more the fact that they want to uh, create an impact through their specific activities. So, what we see, for example, is Yeze um, Business School is declaring that they want to have a deep, positive and lasting impact on people, company and society. And uh, uh, they want to do this by giving a deeper meaning in doing business. So this is just one example. Uh, Yale is very similar. They want to contribute to improving the world today and for future generations. Uh, MIT declares that they, they want to serve the nation and the world for the future uh, up to Stanford to declare itself as a purposeful university. So uh, purpose is uh, core to their own definition. And uh, in our uh, little uh, experience, uh, we did something similar because we revised our mission and vision uh, very recently. And where, uh, where what you can see in this slide is our new uh, vision and mission. And what we say is that uh, in, in our vision, uh, the, our vision for the future is a world where responsible leaders are driven by the search for collective benefit, empowered by technology and enlightenment. Of course, the second part is very core uh, to our uh, uh, us being a school of management within a technical university. And as in a specular way, in our mission, we say that we want to contribute to the collective good. And uh, I would like also to underline that beside the typical activities for which we want to achieve this goal, that is uh, quality education and quality research, there is a clear statement uh, of our willingness to engage with uh, the society and the, and the, and the community. So, um, if we see this, and of course this is just the surface, because uh, what we want to discuss later on is also how uh, to do that, uh, we would like also to understand what, what could be the driving forces, because of course there might be values uh, uh, behind uh, these uh, new statements, uh, values uh, by the management uh, and, and, or, and or the shareholders or stakeholders, major stakeholders of, uh, of the business school. Um, there is a moral responsibility dimension that can play uh, uh, since, uh, as we mentioned before, we have been called for action. So <laughs> if we are a responsible business school, of course, somehow we need to respond or respond to this call for, for action. But somehow the, there might be also some, uh, uh, if you want more um, market-driven uh, uh, considerations that can drive us in this direction. Uh, and mm, two main considerations can be the fact that, uh, uh, as we know, uh, new generations are more and more sensitive to this aspect of, uh, uh, from the one hand, uh, uh, living in a, in a better society, uh, better both in terms of uh, the environment uh, in which we live and uh, uh, the equity uh, and inclusiveness of the society we live in. Uh, and so since uh, the new generations are our, our, our current and future <laughs> uh, prospects and targets, uh, of course, uh, if you are able to answer uh, their uh, need for a higher purpose uh, and a higher meaning in what they are doing, of course, we are uh, would be able to attract uh, uh, the, uh, more talents and more uh, uh, prospect students. And this couples with the fact that uh, if we uh, have this kind of approach uh, to um, 
uh, to um, kind of uh, see uh, the business uh, uh, world and the uh, economic uh, paradigm, uh, we have a better chance to involve uh, in our activities uh, and if you want also in our shares, uh, where we, part of the shares are uh, from, from, from the companies, uh, for those companies that have uh, a, a similar approach and have full commitment to sustainability. And in this way, there is a kind of virtuous cycle in uh, being able to de develop uh, uh, long-term uh, projects uh, with them and so increasing our ability to impact uh, through sustainability. And why not? Another reason could be also to attract and, retain, uh, and uh, increase the retention of uh, our staff, so both uh, uh, administrative staff and, uh, and professors as well. Um, so the key question is uh, how can we impact? What, what could be the dimension through which we can impact? And I tried to summarize and put down some, uh, some ideas. Uh, and I, I would say that uh, for sure, research and education are two key areas where we, can, we, we need to contribute and we need to uh, have an impact. Uh, but I added also uh, three other dimensions. One is the engagement with the community, so not just uh, um, focusing on, on, on our um, uh, real core, but also uh, looking outside and, uh, and, and living outside uh, the business school. Uh, advocacy, if you want, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's uh, 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 something related to, to that, and we'll speak more about that later on with uh, some example. And why not also leading by example? So the way we operate our business school is also a way through which we can have an impact. But before going on, uh, I would like to uh, ask you something about what you are doing in, in, in your business school and what is your view about how your business school can, uh, can impact. So uh, again, going back to this five dimension, uh, which dimension do you consider is more important for impact through sustainability in, uh, in your school? Okay, so I've launched the poll right now, just uh, collecting answers. Uh, so everyone, feel free to answer right now. Okay, so the results are 13% in research, 63% in education, 0% in engagement with the community, 0% in advocacy, 25% in lead by example. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, of course, uh, education and training is our core, uh, so we uh, we are sure we can impact through education and, of course, uh, research, depending on how important research is uh, in our business school. We know that we have different models in different business schools. It's another area and lead by example. Uh, engagement with the community and advocacy, you don't see this as particularly relevant. Uh, uh, well, I hope I can show you some uh, examples of uh, what other business schools and what uh, we are doing to see how, um, in fact, uh, link uh, uh, what you can do with the research and education also uh, with the outreach that you can have uh, uh, in uh, the community and the, uh, in the society uh, of uh, what you are doing within uh, uh, your school as well. So let me go back to this point and to see if uh, you can consider this uh, maybe in the future as a possibility. Uh, after seeing uh, some example of what I mean by engagement with the community and advocacy. Uh, okay, so, and here is, uh, in fact, uh, how we try to represent the, the type of activities we are, we are doing and the program uh, that we started developing uh, uh, some years ago, I would say four, four or five years ago, uh, is called the Sustainable 
zone that stays for School of Management, of course. So uh, we try to picture what we are doing in four main uh, quadrants uh, that are, of course, teaching and education on the one side, research on the other side, uh, the engagement with the community, as I was mentioning before, and uh, the working environment. So I will go through these different dimensions um, one by one uh, so that I can um, provide you a general picture of what can be done and uh, what we are doing specifically within uh, within this area. Uh, well, first of all, uh, teaching. Uh, and uh, here, uh, I don't repeat uh, again uh, why it is important. Uh, of, of course, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we, we are here to educate future leaders and to influence the, uh, how the new uh, uh, economic system will work in the future. And we are here also to uh, contribute to uh, SDG 4 through uh, the quality of education we provide, and in particular, uh, the, 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 the uh, ambition to uh, give all the people the instruments uh, to contribute sustain to sustainable development in the future. Uh, having said that, this is not easy to be done. Uh, so there are some key challenges that I see when a business school face uh, or have been facing um, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, aspect. Uh, the first uh, key challenge is, uh, okay, but is uh, the market asking for this? Uh, and of course, I mentioned before that apparently, yes, the mass market should ask this because uh, new generations are asking for this and companies are more and more aware about uh, the importance of sustainable development. But still, uh, it's, it's a matter of, uh, of dimension of how many people and how many companies are already on uh, in, in this direction. So if, uh, including more sustainable development content or approach in our courses is really a, a, a way to satisfy what the market is asking for or, or not. Um, and in a similar vein, also the expectation from the shareholder or the key stakeholders of the business school may have different views on what to expect from the business school itself. So this is from the the, the, the uh, aspect of uh, um, should we do that and uh, who is asking for, uh, for for this. On the other side, even when we uh, say yes, this is what we need to do, uh, there is still a, a matter about uh, how to do this. So what is the right approach or is, is there any right approach to do that or what are the possible approaches? And one of the aspects I think is uh, uh, consider to what extent uh, sustainability courses should be compulsory or elective courses. And here, in, in, uh, in my view, um, uh, there, there are um, uh, two uh, main approaches that can be uh, summarized uh, that I call, uh, from the one hand, the split approach uh, that is uh, uh, what I say, teaching sustainability management. What, the, what do I mean? It means that basically sustainability management or CSR management or business ethics become a new additional discipline uh, to be included in our courses, in our programs, uh, beside the traditional courses that we regularly teach, such as marketing, accounting, uh, finance, and uh, supply chain management and whatever. So this is the split approach. On the other side, you have the so-called embedded approach that is uh, uh, teaching sustainable management. That means uh, when I teach management, I teach uh, how to manage a company, a business in a sustainable way. So basically the principle of sustainability are embedded in the way I teach the different uh, traditional disciplines. So if I'm teaching supply chain management, I teach all the traditional aspects and I read all the key levers that I can use in supply chain management to build a more sustainable supply chain. So this is uh, uh, how I try to summarize possible approaches. Uh, so now I have two questions for, for you. Uh, I go back to a first question that is, uh, okay, uh, 
what is ex your experience in terms of what the market is asking? So, uh, do you think there is still not, not yet a market for this, not a, a, an important market? Or can you say that there is a market that is more latent or fringe market? It's not really the core of the market we are um, <clears throat> we are facing, or you are experiencing a high, a strong market demand for more sustainability content in the business school programs. Great. So the poll is open right now, and uh, people are currently voting. So we'll just give them a few seconds here. Great, so the uh, results are in, 86% say latent or fringe market, 14% say high market demand, 0% say no markets. Okay, <laughs> very good, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I, I completely agree that uh, the market is, uh, is emerging, so it's, uh, it's clear, there, there, are, there are clear signs about the fact that uh, at least someone is asking for, for, for this. Uh, uh, it's also true that uh, sometimes even driven by the expectation of the company themselves, people uh, consider this uh, uh, sustainability content more of, 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 as a fringe uh, <laughs> benefit. Uh, so something to add to what they, they traditionally expect to learn in a business school rather than being the, really the core content of what they expect from the business school. So I think our experience is a little bit uh, in line with what you're, you're, you're mentioning and uh, we see a clear difference if we compare different uh, grades in education, meaning uh, if you co compare uh, Bachelor or Master of Science uh, students compared to MBA or even executive MBAs with a much higher uh, demand for this kind of contents in the younger generation, so in the uh, lower grades of our education. Uh, so let's move now instead to the second question that I have for you, uh, going back to the two approaches uh, that I was mentioning before, the split approach or the embedded approach, uh, which one are you taking uh, in, in your school, if any, of course, if you're taking some approach to include sustainability in your courses. All right, so we're collecting the answers right now. Okay, so the answers are in. 67% uh, say split approach, 33% embedded approach. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, um, I, I would say, of course, uh, the split approach uh, uh, is, um, it makes sense, but makes perfect sense. Uh, and um, if you want, it's uh, um, the less risky approach because you are adding something to your uh, traditional program, so the core of the, the traditional program is still there. And then, of course, beside you start building a culture of sustainability in uh, some specific courses. And then, of course, uh, another issue could be uh, to what extent these additional courses are considered as compulsory or uh, kind of elective courses in, in your program. Uh, while the embedded approach is much uh, stronger, if you want, much uh, uh, radical, much more radical compared to the split approach. And, and so um, it requires a complete shift in, in uh, what the, the business school is doing, es especially if you want to extend this embedded approach to uh, the overall programs of the school and not just on some of the programs of, of, the, of your school. So let's see what uh, we, 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 do, we are doing, we are trying to do, of course, I'm not saying that this, this is uh, the best practice, it's just sharing some ideas of uh, our thoughts of uh, what we can do. Uh, then might, might be even a little bit serendipitous, so not uh, really necessarily a, a, a 
uh, um, a strong statement from, from, from our school. So basically, uh, we set up a, a clear strategic goal on the fact that we want to increase the diffusion of uh, uh, SDG-related topics in our um, courses. Uh, so in talking about sustainability, we clearly refer to the SDG uh, scheme. Uh, and uh, what we, we are trying to add is, is I would say, a mainly an, an embedded approach, but with some dedicated courses as well. Uh, and this is, comes uh, uh, from the fact that uh, we don't really have dedicated faculty on uh, issues like, such as sustainability management, CSR, uh, business ethics, uh, or things like that. As uh, I was introduced in this web webinar, I'm a professor in uh, uh, people management and organization, but I do research, quite a lot of research on sustainability. and so. Uh, while I teach uh, uh, organization and people management, try to embed uh, the, the results of my research on sustainability in, in, uh, in my course. And similar to what I'm doing, also my colleagues are doing uh, in a very similar way. Um, but of course, as I was mentioning before, we have also some dedicated courses with uh, three different purposes. Uh, some courses are really aimed at framing the challenge of sustainability and sustainable development. So we need to, 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 to spend some time specifically to uh, let people understand what sustainable de development means and what are the, the key approaches that companies can take to face this, uh, more at, at the strategic and general level of the company. Uh, second group of courses is to go more in depth in some specific specific topic because of course uh, if you want to have a deep understanding that and also on, on the on the innovation for uh, renewable energies of course you need to dedicate a course uh, to this specific subject cannot be really embedded into a traditional discipline and then we have special programs where uh, the specific aim of the program itself is uh, uh, to uh, contribute to sustainable development. I will show you uh, in a minute some, uh, uh, some examples. Uh, having uh, uh, this embedded approach uh, brings uh, 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 with, it, uh, with it a specific challenge that is the challenge of uh, being able to say to what is uh, the percentage of the content, uh, on the, of the sustainability content in our disciplinary courses. Because of course, if you have a dedicated courses, you know exactly how many hours uh, you teach about that subject. While instead, if this is really infused in what you are teaching in, in the, the, the general discipline you are teaching, it's much more difficult to really measure uh, what is uh, uh, the sustainability content. So I will spend a few words also in saying uh, how we think to approach this, this uh, specific challenge. Um, uh, so, just to give you some uh, some more specific idea, in a very very preliminary estimate, we uh, estimated an average of 10% of uh, sustainability management content in our courses, uh, uh, with a, a, a quite a high range because uh, some courses uh, have uh, quite higher percentages compared uh, to others. Of course, depending on on, on the specificity. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, we have some dedicated courses uh, and, and Master of Science, in the Bachelor, and uh, in, uh, in uh, the postgraduate and post-experience programs. Uh, so, just to, uh, to give uh, example, in the Master of Science, we have two specific uh, tracks or majors uh, that refer to uh, some type of sustainability content, and this energy and environmental management on the other side, and sustainable operations, social innovation. Uh, uh, major uh, that is another one. So this is beside the general content that is given and this is again with the purpose of going more in depth in uh, some specific aspects. Or in a similar vein uh, we uh, just developed the uh, sustainability and social impact leadership executive education uh, set of courses uh, to be offered on the market. Um, and in, ter in, in terms of spe special programs, uh, uh, just two examples that I think are, are interesting. On the one side, we have a very uh, interesting program um, uh, 
uh, that was uh, supported by the Italian Agency for Cooperation and Development uh, that, uh, and was run uh, in collaboration with Politecnico di Torino that was called uh, Emerging African Innovation Leaders, where the specific aim was uh, to train and expose a number of uh, uh, leaders uh, uh, coming from uh, different African countries uh, uh, to the so-called next industry, not next production revolution. So, uh, educating them uh, to the use of new technologies to uh, increase the competitiveness of uh, of different type of industries, uh, uh, with the aim of uh, uh, giving them the instruments to become uh, uh, to have a pivotal role in uh, fostering the innovation in their own country. So you see that this program is really targeted to on a specific uh, sustainable development goal that is uh, to support uh, the uh, competitiveness of uh, uh, some uh, underdeveloped countries. Uh, a second example is uh, on um, the development of, of some uh, MOOCs uh, dedicated specifically to this subject that were developed in collaboration with uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, institutions, organizations that were interested in uh, diffusing uh, and, uh, and uh, sharing knowledge uh, with specific aims. So, uh, first example is an Entrepreneurship Without Border uh, MOOC that was uh, aimed at uh, providing key uh, knowledge about entrepreneurship, again targeted to emerging countries. Uh, that was developed in collaboration with UNCTAD. Uh, and uh, a second uh, MOOC that was a, a, aimed at uh, uh, creating a, a, a higher awareness of how uh, it's possible to reduce uh, food waste, uh, both uh, from uh, the consumer point of view and uh, from the company, uh, of course, food companies point of view. So again, example of specific courses dedicated to specific goals related to sustainable development. Um, and as I mentioned before, our attempt is uh, to try to, uh, uh, to, to map uh, the content, the sustainable development con content that we have in our core courses uh, through a, a self-assessment approach uh, um, uh, where each professor kind of uh, analyze and declare in their, uh, in their syllabi uh, the specific content related to sustainable development, uh, starting from a list of keywords that can be used uh, to recognize the content related to the different SDGs, uh, and uh, uh, in this way, having uh, 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 supporting them in uh, uh, defining what is uh, the uh, specific SDG related content in their course. And this uh, uh, exercise was somehow inspired uh, from uh, a, a, a protocol uh, that is used to uh, uh, trace uh, and and and, uh, uh, and, um, and uh, measure uh, the uh, sustainability approach of uh, um, uh, of uh, of educational institution that is called Stars. Um, finally, uh, still talking about teaching. Uh, um, for us, uh, uh, the role of uh, projects is very, very important uh, because of the uh, multidisciplinary uh, uh, approach that is often needed uh, in order to solve uh, sustainability challenges. Uh, we see projects as really a key way to start uh, uh, asking our students and participants uh, to think uh, uh, about uh, uh, possible solution to the key uh, uh, sustainability and social uh, societal challenges. So we use uh, thesis project, uh, final project works, internships, uh, capstones projects uh, within programs, uh, but also challenges and competitions uh, as uh, ways uh, through which uh, students and participants start to be uh, exposed uh, uh, to this kind of subject and try to use uh, the uh, learning that uh, they developed uh, during the different courses uh, uh, to solve uh, specific uh, pro problems. And as uh, we'll see uh, later on, this is very much related to the uh, approach in terms of engagement with the society that we, we use, because in most of the cases, these projects are run in collaboration with the uh, 
companies, but also non-for-profit organizations and uh, civil society organizations that uh, provide uh, the uh, challenge, provide uh, the knowledge of the specific problem and ask for, for, for solutions. But I will spend some more time later on uh, to talk about that. Uh, let's move to uh, the second key pillar, uh, that is uh, research. Uh, and so, uh, the way through which we can impact through sustainability is leading research on sustainable development. That means, of course, uh, to contribute to the, the creation of new knowledge about sustainable management. Uh, uh, there are also very nice examples that I saw uh, in uh, different business schools uh, about developing research around societal challenges. So the way you define uh, uh, your um, key areas for research is defined through the type of societal challenges you want to address and try to solve with your research that I find a very, a very uh, impactful way uh, to see how research can contribute uh, to the society. Uh, of course, it's also uh, important to, to, to consider how many different aspects you are able to cover uh, in terms of sustainable development. And finally, uh, this is, uh, I think, very important, understand the type of impact that you can have by the, the creation of the new knowledge uh, through your research. Uh, a side aspect uh, that uh, I think, however, is very, very important is also the fact that uh, if you want to lead research on sustainable development, uh, you need to be, first of all, sustainable in the way you do research. And, and so enforcing ethical codes for research is really, I see it really as part of the, the overall uh, picture. And I came across uh, this initiative that I found uh, very, very interesting that is uh, this uh, responsible research for business and management principles that uh, try exactly to um, define uh, uh, what are the, uh, the key principles uh, underpinning uh, our, our responsible uh, research. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, basically it summarizes something that uh, is uh, between the lines of what I mentioned uh, before. Uh, of course, there are challenges also here, uh, also knowing uh, our system for uh, evaluating research and uh, to develop research. Uh, I think the, the key challenge is a little bit to overturn our typical approach of doing research. We often start our research by saying that, that there is a literature gap and of course, if you want to contribute to solve some uh, societal challenge, you need to start from you want to uh, face rather than the literature gap that uh, you found. Uh, I think the second point is, uh, uh, is about uh, the real implementation of uh, uh, what uh, you researched. So if you really want to create an impact that goes beyond the, the pure uh, academic uh, circle, uh, I think it, it, it's very important to, to uh, care about if the ideas you develop have been somehow implemented or contributed to, um, uh, to, to, to solve some of the problems you were trying to face. Uh, and this means also that uh, probably uh, you need to couple a, a more traditional academic research with more applied research sometime. Um, So again, uh, what uh, are we doing? Um, I would say nothing really special, uh, but uh, as uh, in uh, completely in line with uh, our approach uh, with uh, with uh, teaching. Also, in this case, uh, uh, we have very little research that is really just on sustainability, uh, because most of our research is embedded in, in uh, traditional disciplines and within these traditional disciplines we contribute by studying how to make uh, uh, the specific aspect of management more sustainable and of course in line with our tradition uh, and so what we we did uh, uh, again to be more aware of what where we were contributing we tried to map our research according to the sustainable development goals and so uh, 
quite in line with our tradition uh, in terms of research areas. Uh, there is quite a strong con contribution on, on SDG 12, that is uh, um, uh, responsible consumption and production. I would say more on production than on consumption and be because of our, our industrial, uh, strong industrial engineering uh, uh, background. Uh, we have quite significant uh, uh, research in um, uh, good health and uh, well-being uh, and inno innovation in infrastructure. And then we have uh, more specific research on some other SDG. Uh, and, and what we were able also to track is the percentage of papers that have been published uh, that are related to some SDG topics. Um, so, uh, I would say, again, this is just uh, reflecting a little bit the same approach we have uh, in teaching, so a more embedded approach rather than a separated approach. But I think what, what I would like to discuss with you a little bit uh, is, again, this uh, role of impact that goes beyond the, the pure uh, um, impact on the academic, uh, um, on the academic community. Uh, and uh, we know very well uh, the fact that uh, uh, there are increasing number of uh, uh, countries and systems that are moving towards uh, uh, this broader idea of in measuring uh, impact in a broader way, um, and, and in particular beyond the typical bibliometric indexes uh, that we are used to use uh, to measure the success, if you want, of our, of our research activity. So I would like to, to check with you uh, to what extent you are, in your business school, you are trying to measure uh, impact beyond the uh, bibliometric indexes in a structured way, or you are trying to do that, uh, but uh, in a more qualitative way, or if you don't really measure impact beyond the, uh, the traditional measures. Fantastic. So we're collecting the responses right now. Uh, we'll give you guys another five to ten seconds to collect the responses. Okay, so pretty much everyone has voted almost. Uh, and it comes at 67% somehow yes, 33% no, and 0% yes in a structured way. Okay, so we see that there is still uh, quite a, a, an important struggle to find a way to measure in a structured way uh, research impact beyond the bibliometric indexes, and I think this is really uh, a, 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 a common challenge for every one of us. Uh, I would say, uh, beside our declaration of uh, our willingness to impact beyond uh, the academic community, uh, we, also, we are also struggling to find uh, a good way to, to measure our index. We just recently came up uh, with a possible model, uh, which is not very easy to implement. We are testing this in our, in our research, where basically we uh, uh, emphasize uh, uh, five different areas where we can impact, uh, that is, of course, the academic community, but beside that you have uh, students uh, uh, and, and faculty, uh, so through your research you inform students and so you create an impact uh, on your students, citizens and society, so you, you uh, also are able to, to disseminate your knowledge in a broader context. Uh, your the enterprises, the companies with which you are working, and or broader uh, audience of the companies in uh, in your country and the institutions as well. And so the idea is that for each of these dimensions, we measure also the extent to which we are creating an impact in terms of uh, just simple communication and dissemination of research results, uh, to the fact that. Uh, um, the different stakeholders adopted the, the ideas you developed in your research up to the fact that uh, they also received the benefit by implementing your, your ideas. And again, we are trying to develop a set of measures uh, that uh, will help us uh, to 
measure our impact on these different dimensions. Uh, but uh, I, I cannot say that we solved completely the problem of the difficulties of measuring impacts. But this is just uh, the, the, the sharing with you some ideas uh, of the possible direction we, we, we can take. It. And of course, in the background, there is all the evaluation to what extent this impact that I'm making is an impact that is coherent with a sustainable development. Um, so let me move to the engagement with the community I was mentioning before. Um, basically, uh, uh, my idea is that beyond our role of educators and knowledge developers or disseminators, uh, we should have probably also the ambition to serve the society at large uh, and there are different possible ways to do that and uh, possible way I see is uh, first of all the engagement with the non-profit organization and civic society organization that uh, are uh, a mean for which we can uh, um, uh, achieve a, a broader impact on the society uh, Students are very often a very important uh, uh, instrument uh, to uh, promote social responsibility initiatives. So, so also engagement with students and, and support of uh, students' initiatives in this direction is also a way uh, to engage with the, with the communities. And then there, there might be also the more traditional approach that is uh, uh, fostering or uh, allowing volunteering or pro bono work uh, within uh, your organization. And again, I put advocacy as well as one of the ways for which we can engage with the community. Let me give you some example, uh, and then I will go back to ask you what you are doing. Um, we developed uh, this program that we called uh, uh, SOM for No Profit, uh, School of Management for No Profit, where we had a specific goal of uh, facilitating and uh, de further developing the relationship between the School of Management uh, in all its parts, uh, so professors, students, uh, research units, and so on, and uh, uh, known for profit and social uh, organization and social enterprises, uh, uh, with the, the main aim to uh, make the, the, the competence and knowledge of the School of Management available to uh, these uh, uh, in, uh, these organizations uh, and to uh, develop joint projects. Uh, so we divided this in uh, in four main uh, line of action. First of all, uh, uh, action with students, uh, with a stronger involvement of uh, uh, non-for-profit and social enterprises in our courses uh, for our project work thesis and internship, uh, with a double advantage of. Uh, making students closer to this kind of uh, problems and environment, and at the same time, giving the opportunity, opportunities to this organization to access uh, the knowledge of our students and the capabilities of our, our students. Uh, second dimension is doing some research together with nonprofit organization and some capacity building project with them. We also uh, thought that sometimes need some training and so we developed specific programs uh, to support the training and development of this kind of organization and then we thought that it was also important to create a community uh, uh, of organizations that uh, collaborate with us so we, we we run a yearly workshop with all the organizations we work with but let me go back uh, uh, to what you are doing so uh, is any of you uh, involved somehow with non-profit organization in civil society and in particular no or yes and which uh, on which activities uh, again pro bono volunteering service research projects teaching project or other all right so the poll is now open you can start voting <clears throat> so the answers uh, come to 17% in none, 33% in pro bono volunteering service, 0% research projects, 
50% teaching projects and 0% others. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we, we also started from uh, teaching projects, uh, uh, which are the very easy one, let's say, uh, once you, you have uh, some specific uh, link with uh, some of uh, uh, this organization, uh, it's, uh, uh, they are very enthusiastic in participating to, to our uh, program, so it's, it's, it's very, very positive. Uh, we are not so used, uh, used to have volunteering activities as a structured part of our organization, in the sense that, of course, we have many of our <laughs> colleagues that do volunteering work, but outside, let's say, uh, the, the specific uh, activity at the business school. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty in line with the, with the, the answers that came out from from the poll. Uh, let me uh, just uh, give uh, uh, one example, a couple of examples of what I was mentioning by advocacy. That seems to be something a little bit far from uh, from uh, what you were thinking about way of impacting. Uh, uh, on, uh, on the society. Um, a very interesting project uh, we, we are running uh, here uh, that is uh, a way to contribute to the community is uh, a collaboration with uh, uh, the city of Milan uh, with a specific uh, uh, aim to uh, reduce uh, uh, and fight food waste uh, and uh, the, 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 basically the idea was uh, to develop uh, a, a some uh, local hub for the collection and redistribution of uh, surplus food, uh, which is uh, really a very uh, practical uh, project uh, that required, a high, however, a lot of uh, coordination among uh, the different actors from the one hand, uh, the canteens of companies uh, or the points of sales of uh, retailers uh, donating some food and uh, the charities uh, that were on the territory to uh, re uh, where the food was uh, redistributed. Uh, and so the university and Polytechnic de Milano specifically had a key role uh, as a coordinator and uh, uh, so it was very um, important to uh, make this project possible and to put together different part, parts uh, involved in the project uh, and uh, to be a, a super part as uh, actor to try to uh, arrive to solutions that were really uh, optimized um, uh, from a different point of view. So uh, this is an, an idea of uh, a role of advocacy in terms of uh, uh, being facilitators of uh, some project uh, uh, aimed at uh, uh, solving some specific uh, uh, challenges. A uh, completely different example is, is instead uh, uh, the way for which our research can influence uh, somehow uh, the practices and the, start, the, the standards, the regulation and policies on uh, specific uh, subjects. Uh, and uh, here I bring you the example of uh, uh, a research that has been done on uh, 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 social impact uh, 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 offer and demand in terms of, uh, of, uh, of capital. Uh, that. Uh, of course, it was a research, but had a quite strong influence in uh, the way uh, social impact measurement uh, is is uh, is uh, considered and is performed in uh, in our country. So, uh, through our research and through the dissemination of our research, somehow we we are uh, 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 pushing uh, uh, the behaviors uh, in a specific uh, uh, direction that is uh, coherent with the type of goals we want to to achieve. Um, I need to go quickly to the very last point um, that I will cover very, very quickly uh, because I think I'm sure you have many uh, examples besides what we are doing here at the School of Management. Uh, that is uh, uh, the dimension of uh, leading sustainability by example. So basically the idea of uh, including sustainability practices in uh, schools operations. So uh, the typical concept of, okay, we teach sustainability, we do research on sustainability, but we also need to walk the talk, <laughs> not just uh, uh, teaching the others how to do things, but uh, doing the same things ourselves. And so there are a number of practices that can be implemented in your campus uh, uh, to implement exactly uh, 
the concept that you try to teach and you try to do research on mm? from environmental measures that go from green buildings, resource efficiency, waste management policies and so on to more uh, social measures like uh, well-being measures or diversity, diversity and inclusion and so on and so forth. And again, I think there is a, a, an interesting uh, uh, arena for uh, for uh, 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 sharing best practices and sharing ideas that is the International Sustainable Campus Network, uh, where all the best practices of sustainable campuses are, are, are shared. Okay, I think I, uh, I will stop here um, because I'm, I'm pretty long on the, on the, I have many things to share, so I hope uh, it was useful and so uh, I'm ready to listen from you if you have any further question or curiosity. Thank you so much, Rafael. Now we're running a little bit over time here, so uh, we may not have uh, time to do questions right now, but I do urge uh, anyone to uh, uh, directly contact Rafaela if that is okay with you um, on your end. Yeah, sure. I'm uh, ready to, to answer. Uh, so you can provide my uh, email and uh, of course uh, I, I'm more than uh, happy to receive questions from you and answer to them. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Rafaela. Very interesting topic uh, and some interesting results here as well from the audience. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your input. Uh, we'll be coming up with our next webinar next month, uh, so stay tuned on our events page. Uh, until then, thank you so much for dialing in, and uh, we'll be in touch. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.